This is the uh, Five Dirty Words of CRI. My name is uh, Paul Reed. Uh, this is the first time I've done an Ignite Talk, so this is either going to be awesome or horrible, not sure. I'm a DevOps consultant. Uh, that's what people call me. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but that is what they call me. Oh, crap. Here we go. Okay. Uh, CI, who here does continuous integration? Great, we're not gonna be talking about continuous integration. CI in this context is continuous improvement, specifically uh, postmortems, operational postmortems. Hopefully they'll, they're blameless. We're gonna talk about the five dirty words th that you might hear. Root cause analysis, who does this? Right? This is the idea that if we look at a problem and incident, we could find the linear cause, and if we found the root cause and removed it from the system, we would avoid the in incident entirely together. Now. When I talk to various teams, one of the favorite things I will ask them, oh, did you find the root cause of that incident? And they're like, yes, we did. Here are the eight root causes. And I'm like, no, it is not a root cause if you have eight of them. That's not, that's, I think you misunderstood how that, that works. Um, so what is a better option that we can use? Well, we can talk about proximate causes, right? That there are multiple uh, causes of failure in our systems that can cause in incidents. But also remember that even if we solved all of them, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to not uh, have the incident again. So be aware of that when you're thinking about that. Five whys. This is another sort of linear model of how we think about accidents, right? Who does this, right? The five whys, the Toyota thing, why, 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 right? I always feel uh, kind of like this when I watch people do the five whys, where it's just like, uh, you know, the parrot. Why? Why? And after a while, the team's like, no, no I don't, I'm done with this question, right? The other odd thing that I see is teams seldom get to five. They stop around two or three, which is odd to me. And then the questions that they ask are always kind of all over the map. So five whys, just no. No, 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 no. Um, look into the Swiss cheese model or the systemic model for better examples of accident models that are less linear and actually models the, model the systems that we're actually in. Human error, right? How many of us have said, oh, that incident was human error because someone typed something on a keyboard, right? Human error is a, 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 an explanation that we use. It's a decision that we make where we draw the line to stop looking at things. Now, you might have heard about a little service called S3 that went down uh, a few months ago. If you read their retro, they don't use the term human error at once. They talk about the operational things that they learned about their scripts and their service that made it a very fascinating incident. But even though an engineer typed a thing that was contributory to that, they didn't use the term human error. So stop using human error as an explanation for things. It's not actually a, a thing. Human error is not the cause of failure. It's actually an effect of failure. Um, if you, you'll hear this a lot in retrospectives. Why didn't you, why didn't you notice that monitor thing? Well, you should have done this, right? These are what we call counterfactual statements. The reason they are called counterfactual statements is because they talk about a reality that does not exist. It's almost like we're talking about these alternate realities of things that did not happen. It's like, well, I did not look at the monitoring, so I don't know why you're yelling at me about not having looked at it, right? Um, what we need to do is look at what actually did happen and try to figure out why it made sense to the person that did that. Because if it made sense to them, it probably is gonna make sense to somebody else. And that's what we wanna understand is why it made sense to the person doing the work in the system and explore that, not talk about things that actually didn't ever happen. Best practice, who likes best practices? Who likes other people's best practices? Yeah, right. Okay, so one of the funny things is we always look at these DevOps unicorns. We look at the Netflix and the Amazons of the world and seeing they're doing all these wonderful things. And it's like, that's because they, they didn't do this best practice thing, right? This is a, a quote from a conference I was at where they were like, oh, management loves best practices. Yeah, like Netflix and Amazon did a ton of best practices, right? Um, the problem with best practice is that best practice is not applicable in the complex and complicated systems in which we work. You should be talking about good practice, or if you're going to use best practice, it's applicable in what's called the obvious or simple domain. So use it in the right domain, but you're probably talking about good practice, not best practice. So a couple takeaways. Uh, continuous improvement is not linear, nor it's, it's continuous. So it's, you don't just do it once, and we have now improved. You need to respect reality. We work in complex systems. And finally, you need to treat people like the professionals that they are. Now, if you actually wanted the five dirty words of continuous integration, here they are, broken builds. If you're doing CI, you should be fixing those builds, so there shouldn't be broken builds on your CI system all the time. Flappers are tests that go red and green and red and green. If they do that, then remove them from uh, your test suite because they're not actually providing any value. Bob's Mac Mini.local. This is apparently, I see these beautiful uh, systems where they have 
uh, AWS Configuration Manage Jenkins, and then like all their mobile stuff is done on Bob's lap, uh, Mac Mini on his desk. Merge windows, that means you're not merging back to trunk uh, often enough, and Jenkins build numbers means you're storing artifacts in Jenkins. Don't do that. That's all I got. <laughs>